crisis, even, you know, this could be playing out over the next few months or the next couple years, you know, it really depends on how they try and drag it out and for um, what purpose and, you know, ultimately, um, you know, a lot of it might come down to things as simple as Federal Reserve policy, whether they continue to, um, you know, uh, fight inflation, quote unquote, raising interest rates, even though there's a bunch of uh, banks on the brink and all of this stuff. After Silicon Valley Bank, people thought they weren't going to hike and then they did hike. Um, and you have to keep in mind, too, that there's, um, you know, Catherine Austin Fitz and, and some other people have pointed out that BlackRock has had a lot of um, undue influence over what the Fed does, whether that's uh, the, the going direct research re, uh, reset plan they made with the Fed in Jackson Hole in late 2019 about what their COVID-19 monetary policy would be before COVID-19 happened. Um, or their prediction after Silicon Valley Bank that they would hike rates when everyone else said they wouldn't. And then BlackRock turns out to be, I mean, they have a lot of influence there. And you have, you know, these big guys, whether it's Jamie Dimon or people like Larry Fink pushing to totally reimagine, they say, major global financial institutions like the World Bank and the IMF and all this other stuff going on. There's a lot of madness uh, going on here, but they're obviously making plans, right? And so, I would argue that, um, again, it, it's probably going to be um, a controlled demolition in the sense that they know it has to collapse at some point and they want to be able to control that collapse for their explicit benefit um, and for the implementation of the policy agendas uh, that they want implemented, um, you know, for again, for their benefit, not for our benefit. Right. So that's what we have to look out for. And whether uh, or not people are successful in avoiding all of this ultimately depends on what people do right now. So again, um, and I've said in a lot of past interviews, what it comes down to is how uh, enslaved we are to our own convenience and the system as it is right now. Sometimes it's very hard to change your habits, but now is the time to do that. Uh, and it can be, you can start off with things as simple as divesting from big tech you know, uh, get, for example, if you don't want to stop having a smartphone, you can at least invest in uh, a de-Googled phone or one that doesn't use an operating system from a big tech overlord. Because, you know, for example, if Google, you have an Android phone and Google shuts down your Google account, you can't really use your Android phone anymore unless it's a de-Googled Android. It's very easy for them to take that away from you. And what would you do if you didn't have your smartphone? Some people in the United States and elsewhere would, you know, go totally insane uh, and wouldn't know what to do with them themselves, right? So, you know, people need to be thinking about this stuff and it's not necessarily that hard. And I think another thing people need to divest from as well is legacy social media, um, because to be honest, those platforms are totally controlled and it's like a psyop fest 24 seven on places like Facebook and Twitter. You don't know what's a real account and what's not, if the person you're talking to is real or what's not, um, why things are allowed to go viral. I mean, there's the US military specifically has been pouring millions of dollars in how to manipulate people using social media since at least 2011. Uh, and one of their programs was to try and use social media to control uh, people like they control drones, like basically turn people uh, and direct them like they were robots by using social media and creating fake influencers whose message they then manipulate. It's a, it's a completely manipulated environment, information environment. The alternative to that is to start using RSS feeds again and get an RSS reader app or something like that. You go to the websites you like and you essentially create your own news feed and take out the middleman social media completely so sure. you don't have a manipulated information algorithm anymore there's a lot of ways uh, of, of these different challenges that people can address right now. And of course, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, people need to think about um, how you're going to keep you and your family uh, fed, sheltered, safe during, uh, you know, a time when there's a complete economic collapse. Uh, so the U.S., you know, 2008 uh, was an economic crisis, but it wasn't exactly a complete economic collapse. So I live in South America. I know a lot of people from Argentina. They experienced a complete economic collapse in 2001 that was really really crazy and essentially what i've heard from people over there is that the best way uh to handle that is to be mentally prepared for things getting insane because if you're not you're going to make impulsive very bad decisions most likely based out of fear the more prepared you are whether it's mentally or you know physically or whatever you know the better off you will be because that is really the paradigm we are facing and i definitely think they want to make it um 
extreme enough where people will willingly take the CBDC option or be scared enough right. uh, to give away more of their freedoms for a feeling of greater security. And this is, you know, the paradigm that's been used time and time again uh, to take away our freedoms. And we have very few freedoms left to take, right? Yeah. And uh, to paraphrase the Benjamin Franklin quote, you know, those who give up their uh, freedom for security will have or deserve neither, right? And that's essentially what will happen. Uh, this is a pre-planned crisis. Uh, the way it's going to play out has been planned. And their main tool is fear. So the more you give into that fear and follow where that fear leads you, uh, the more you'll be, you know, the deeper you'll be led into the system that they're creating, right? So these are things to think about when thinking about, you know, what to do. Uh, to prepare yourself. But ultimately, I have hope that enough people will do it, but I don't think everyone will do it. And it might be something like COVID-19 again, where you have a rift among people, um, you know, people going one way and people going the other way. But unfortunately, you know, you have to decide if how much your sovereignty matters to you and if you're willing to make tough decisions to keep it, because we're really at a point where if you don't take the time to think about that stuff or make those decisions, you will lose it. They yeah. will take it from you. I'm going to move on your island, Whitney. We're going to have our own freedom, freedom <laughs> land. I mean, it, but it's true though. Freedom is not a given. It is very fragile and we have to fight to defend it. We have to strengthen yeah. it. Otherwise it's going to erode very quickly. It's interesting that you brought up RSS feed because the other day I read the background of this guy, Aaron Swartz, who helped invent it. And he was fighting yeah. for a lot of this and um, tr tragic death. But you know, this idea that we really do have to take control and the, the internet should be open and our privacy and our data should be protected, but we're moving in the opposite direction. And things like Bitcoin do do give me hope. Um, the idea that through cryptography and and Bitcoin, we could digitally sign to verify things in a world of AI and psyops and all of that. I mean, I really hope we go in the right direction because otherwise I'm I'm scared of the future and I refuse to accept that reality right now. So, so thank you so much, Whitney. I don't know if you have any final thoughts, but uh, everyone check out her article, Rise of Jamie Dimon. You have more articles about the crown family and just going even deeper coming out the book one nation under blackmail amazing whitney i'll give you the the floor yeah well the only thing i'd add to that is uh in may i will probably if all goes well be speaking at the bitcoin magazine conference so uh maybe see you there <laughs> well i'm very very excited about this awesome awesome everyone go to that you, you can get uh tickets b.tc slash conference code HODL for 10% off and go see Whitney. Any Anything else, Whitney? I, I just love <laughs> no, you. I'm that's such it. a fan. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can find my work at unlimitedhangout.com. We have a newsletter that you can sign up to. If you don't want to do the RSS feed stuff, you can get all my, my content straight to your inbox, not really have to worry about uh, crazy social media antics because it's, it's only going to get crazier. We need more journalists like you. You are so brave. Oh, uh, just thank you so much for, for all you do. And I'll talk to you soon, Whitney. Okay. Thanks so much much. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Coin Stories. Again, hit like on the video and make sure that you have those notifications on so you don't miss out on any new episodes. And I would love to hear from you. If you have suggestions, feedback, guest requests, please email me at natalie at talkingbitcoin.com. Thanks so much.